okay <laughs> right okay so um i'll just bring me back uh, over here so um so this term we're going to start off with we're going to sort of meander a little bit with subject i think but um uh, somebody asked before the end of the last term if we could look at reflections and things and i i like that sort of thing and i thought that would be a great subject to start with so as normal we're going to start by doing some drawing uh, and i posted quite a few photographs on the website for you so um, if you haven't got one of those you can uh, either find one of your own obviously or you can um, print one of the ones from the website off okay so there's quite a few on there and the other thing uh, that you're going to need is uh, I've got this kind of grid just here as well. So it's a bit more of a development on from the grids that we've used previously where they've just been squares. Um, I found I, I saw this one when I was trudging through the Internet uh, and basically when I've talked to you about the squares on a grid, um, I've also talked to you about then dividing the squares up as well to help you get um accuracy and things so um i've kind of taken the next step if you like really with the grids and um added uh, the triangles in and i'll go through that uh with you in a second as well um so i'm going to show you um my desk and so you can see what's going on today uh, so we just go oh, down I've here got that, uh, oh gotta put on my camera there we go right so um this is where i have to tilt the sketchbook so you can see what i've got on here this is an old sketchbook um when i went i was really into going out and drawing and things drawing the reflections and water i just tilt it a little bit so you can see it um but often with uh reflections and water and things because uh, the water obviously moves and that when the wind blows and then you've got shadows coming off of things like the uh, the trees over here and you've often then got lines which indicate where the ripples of water go and so forth bigger uh, ones towards and dark ones towards the foreground here and then you've got little stippled and smaller ones as you go towards the back so I'm just showing you a couple of uh, drawings that I've done previously so you can get an idea of and this is all um, this is all done from um, straight observation looking at the real thing there's quite a few bits and pieces in here again reflections in the river in the river Nen and different kinds of marks here so this is I literally just looked at the water and this reflection of a tree I didn't draw any of the bank here but you can see how the marks have changed according to what i'm looking at and then we've got the the reeds coming over the top uh, and this is one of my favorite ones just here because i like the three little uh ducks swimming <laughs> up in the background there as well but um again you've got these overlapping uh built up kind of marks and lines here okay and there's another sort of little experiment there so it kind of goes on a little bit like that really so um, some, in, sometimes when you're looking at the water, the water's blowing on certain parts of the river or lake. So you've got these like little bits here going through the middle, which are highlighted a little bit, but also dots and then dashes horizontally. OK, um, so that's my skull. That was down at London Zoo. <laughs> right okay so um there's that's my sketchbook and and now i've chosen uh not just boats but a range of different subjects so we've got other things like um lighthouses and stuff that you can draw um there's also a few waterfalls and river scenes i think and there are a few that just focus on looking at water itself as well so um you can choose any of those that you'd like to do um, today to get us into drawing after a, a little bit of a break and things as well sorry somebody's coming in my wife's just experimented with the chowns mill roundabout i'm so sorry to interrupt but i just did it all by myself <laughs> she did it all by herself sorry everyone. <laughs> 
I'm really stressed. Are you all right? Yes, I've Is got it. All right? I think I'm in the right lane now. Okay. All right. Have fun, everyone. Sorry. Brave lady. Brave lady. Brave lady. Yes, I know. She went wrong earlier. Ended oh up somewhere God. she didn't want to be. So, oh. sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> Oh dear. Right, so um, I've got here my picture of uh, the boat. Now you've seen, you've probably seen this one before if you've been to a few of the classes. Um, but we're going to uh, look at drawing the uh, object or scene that you choose tonight. Uh, and then we're going to work into it with a little bit of shading to experiment with texture and things. Um, I just thought I'd show you that one. This sheet I've just put onto the website. So you can download this sheet and have a, a better look at it um, yourselves. But there's lots of different ways of drawing uh, water. Um, so... We've obviously got the, the boat over here uh, with the reflections and the distortions in and the tone and shadow. But different artists, as you're probably aware, have interpreted water in different ways. So we've got, for example, we've got Van Gogh over here who, who does these overlapping kind of lines. He's really well known for creating that sense of movement in his pictures and he did lots of his images using ink and using um, line and dashes to show the movement but then translated them into his uh, beautiful paintings over here we've got uh, my little copy of a, a drawing by um, Monet as well Claude Monet um, so you've got these more distinct lines and shapes for the buildings in the background at the top and then as we come down, you can see that um, a, a lot of the shapes are more broken and distorted, as you can see just down here. So you've got the reflection of the spire in the water, uh, but then you've, it's more dashes and things like that. So there's, there's all these sorts of things to experiment with. And then down here, uh, this is more graphic. But the lines have changed in that they're thicker at the foreground and thinner towards the back pretty much like this down here uh, and one of the things the techniques that's quite nice to experiment with here is uh, using your pencil and twisting it as you draw the lines and applying more or less pressure to get these kind of lovely jagged effects which could suggest water as well and then over here are some waves with more contoured lines so the lines are basically following around the shape of the wave to give it that form and then they're rippling off down towards here and I've got stipples for the white foam and things uh, and then the last one on this particular sheet are waves with movement so we've got these lovely lines coming off the crest of these waves all blowing the wind across this way so there's a few things that you can um, experiment with um, on here but as i've said earlier the main sort of thing that we're going to focus on is uh, making a drawing so obviously i've already been in class a couple of times today with the other groups um, mm -hmm. So this is the the two grids on here. One is A4 and one is A5. So you, um, if you can print those off, fantastic. If you can't, then I'll explain how it works. So basically you're going to draw five squares one way, five squares the other. And each square is around four centimetres in uh, width and height so that grid will go on will fit onto an a4 sheet as you can see i've got it on an a3 sheet just here okay now once you've done that and i haven't done it all on here um, but once you've done that you draw a line from corner to corner of the square diagonally like that and then you go back the other way to make that basically that pattern that you can see over there that pattern you can see on my grid 
Now the reason we're doing that, as I've explained earlier already, is that we're trying to break down each square into smaller sections so that you can really pinpoint the exact start and finish point of different shapes in your picture. Okay, so the first thing to do today will be to draw out one of these grids. As I said, I've got these at the moment, which are kind of templates really um, for helping you to draw the grid. So if you were to do it with the template, you would, oh, just move that down a bit. You would just put dots all the way around like this including the corners and you've seen that I've obviously done this with you before so you've probably got the idea and then draw from top to bottom joining those dots so nice and easy like that like that and then go the other way and you'll have your grid drawn out a lot quicker and a lot e more easily than if you're measuring everything out. So there we go. Ta -da. Ta -da. And then from corner to corner, corner to corner to corner, like that. So straight through the whole thing. And it is important to go from corner to corner so you travel through every other corner on each of the other boxes like that so you're making this kind of tiled pattern if you like you do that for all of your uh, squares so you end up with this okay oh. right and then when you've done that now my now my photos that i printed off are all a a5 um, if you print your photo off and it's a on an a4 sheet and fits into an a4 sheet then all you need to do is get hold of the same size grid and draw it on the a4 sheet if you've got a smaller print like i have then you do exactly the same thing over your photograph like this and then you put the grid nice and heavily over the whole of your photograph because essentially what I'm doing here is I'm enlarging my image so I'm going from A4 going from A4 sorry A5 small to large up to a4 so i'm enlarging this picture but if you've got an a4 picture you're simply just um, copying it the same size okay so here we go um so you can see the grid on there you can see the crossing uh the cross grid that i've got on there i didn't draw it in the whole of the grid at the bottom there um, so most of the this stage of the work was me um actually putting in texture as well as tone uh, I talked a little bit about how you build up the tone using uh, the graphite so I put down one layer with the 2b and then working back over it with 6b uh, and that's to really push back some of those darker tones and give it lots more shadow and depth in there as well uh, and then I'm uh, obviously building on top of the shadows and reflections on the texture of the boat and so forth. And as I progress, I see more and more shadows. Uh, and this is one of the things about drawing is that you see more as you um, draw. Uh, you learn more about the um, object you're drawing by looking at it and um, investigating it with your pencils. So. Uh, you don't uh, just draw it straight away you build those layers in to learn more about the textures and the tones and the shapes and so forth so I had quite a lot of fun doing uh, doing this drawing you see the tones and the different types of marks that I'm putting in 
on the boat to show the rusty texture. One thing you'll notice about reflections as well often is that the shadow or the um, reflections themselves are often uh, much darker. And you can see that on the top and the bottom uh, on the of uh, you can see that on the boat itself and in the reflections in the water on the right hand side of the boat as we're looking at it. So here I'm putting in obviously you can see this putting in some of the tone shadow. And I'm using a blending stick to soften and smooth um, a lot of that off and using a putty rubber to very lightly lift some of the graphite off to give us those uh, ripples in the reflections in the water um, just there and then I use some hatching lines back over the top of that to really just show some of those uh, lovely um, tones in there as well and to give the water just a little touch of texture as well and there we go working back into the boat and you can see that I hop around uh, the picture quite a bit really I'm going from one area to the other as I spot things I put them in uh, it's quite a lot of fun doing it that way And I think that works really because as you look at a picture you spot different things as you're working on it. You think, oh I need to put that in, I need to put that in. Or I've missed two, a little bit of tone and shadow on that bit so I'll go back over to there. Um, and just this little bit I was putting in some of the tone again as you can see by shading it quite gently with the 2B pencil. And adding some stipples, dots and scribbles and scumbles here in over the top again layering over the top of the texture inside the boat there as well so it's coming together quite nicely one of the things to note about the video here and the picture is that I'm working at uh, with lights and things around um, so you do get a bit of shadow or sorry highlights where the light reflects off of the graphite uh, pencil so it sometimes looks a little bit lighter and there was Scout she was being a little bit of a pain this evening wanting lots of attention of course as dogs should <laughs> and also um, moaning because she wanted to go in the garden uh, hunt mice and things like that anyway there we go. So I do do a little bit more on the boardwalk where the boats are tied up in just a few seconds. Let me jump ahead a little bit there. There we go. There we go. So bringing in some of the tone first of all. There's a shadow just along there. I'm not sure why the screen went that shape. I think it's me. Pressing a button by mistake. But there we are. So a very nice and enjoyable lesson today. Thank you very much and see you next week for some colour pencil.